Jesus taught his 12 apostles and promised to send the Holy Spirit to guide them into all the truth. The apostles faithfully carried Jesus' message to the whole world. But how did the gospel spread? St. Paul told Timothy, What you have heard from me, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Five generations of handing on the sacred tradition. Let's count. One, Jesus teaches the apostles. Two, Paul himself receives the tradition. Three, he teaches it to Timothy, whom four, he exhorts to teach other faithful men so that five, they're able to pass the tradition on to others. Five generations of passing on the teaching of Christ and the apostolic tradition. They passed on the truth like athletes pass the torch in the Olympic Games. That's what the word tradition means, something that is handed on. The apostles handed on the sacred tradition to men like these. These are called the apostolic fathers because they were first to receive the tradition from the lips and the example of the apostles, or because they were so close in time to the apostles. Here is Ignatius of Antioch, Clement of Rome, Polycarp of Smyrna, Irenaeus of Lyon, and Justin Martyr. Remember I said they lived close in time to the apostles? Step over here. Let me show you what I mean. Look how their lives overlap each other in our timeline. Here's Jesus, who dwelled among us until about A.D. 30. And then in the purple background, we have the apostles, Peter, Paul, and John. And what's so exciting to me is how the lives of the apostolic fathers intermingle with the apostles. For example, Jesus taught John. And then John taught Polycarp. And in turn, Polycarp taught Irenaeus. Of these five fathers, the last two... Irenaeus and Justin never met the apostles, but I include them because they were so close in time and because of their importance as authentic witnesses of the apostolic tradition. How did the apostles hand on the truth? The fullness of the Christian faith was handed on mainly through oral tradition, teaching and preaching, and through the life and liturgy of the church. The word tradition simply means something that is handed on. It's as easy as that. Did you know that it took centuries before the apostolic writings were finally collected into what we call the New Testament? Many people read the Bible without knowing where it came from. Before my conversion to the Catholic Church, I believed in sola scriptura, the Bible alone. I rejected tradition, especially Catholic tradition. Like this wall cuts me off from the other side, I was cut off from the church and the sacred tradition. It seems that in practice, some people think that the Bible just kind of fell from the sky. From the sky? I don't think so. The Bible is a Catholic book. It's our family heirloom. And nothing should cut us and the Bible off from our history, from the sacred tradition and the teaching authority of the church. The constant belief of the Jews and the early Christians can be demonstrated with this three-legged stool. A stool needs three legs to stand. But if we decide that we want to tear off the magisterium and throw away the sacred tradition, we're left with a one-legged stool, the Bible alone. <laughs> and I guess that proves a stool needs three legs. And that's the way God designed his church, too. St. Paul directed the Thessalonians, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. And to the Corinthians he wrote, I commend you because you maintain the traditions as I delivered them to you. But where can we find this fullness of the faith? It's in the heart of the Catholic Church, in the scriptures, the sacred tradition, and in the church's life and liturgy.